Hi there, this is Rob at Reason101.net and uh, I'm here to do a bit of a continuation on my Dr. Octokong um, Combinator. Uh, what we've done, uh, if you can recall, last time we created a set of 10 loops, um, each assigned to their own pad, and uh, we had them running non-stop so that when you play them, the loops would play, when you let go, they turn off. So we've got 10 different loops here. Now what I've done is I've actually expanded it so that each of the Rex players has eight loops in each slot. So there's actually 80 loops within this player and you can use Kong pad number 16 to go through these loops one at a time. So you'll see they can go two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four. So it goes through each of the loops. So as you're playing the loops, and I'll just pull up my keyboard here. So as you're playing these loops, just move it over here. You can switch through them playing the pad. I'll also set it up so that pad 15 is a random generator, so you don't know where it's going to go next. So that adds to a lot of different um, ways that you can play around. You've got the random sequencer and then you've got the forward sequencer here. Um, I'll just show you how to do this on one of the Octorexes uh, and basically it just uses two Thors and a little bit of CV routing. Uh, so let's just, for now, let's just mute, or no, we're not going to mute that. Um, let's create a mixer between here. Let's make sure it's routed correctly. Uh, okay. And then let's mute that. And we're going to create a new combinator here. Okay. Create a combinator. And I'm just going to quickly create my Octorex or my Kong. Then I'm going to create the Octorex. Then I'm going to have to route this up a little bit. Okay, let's remove these. Don't need the audios. Okay, this is going up to the mixer. Okay, gate trigger down here. Just add in one loop. Um, and actually, what I'll do is, uh, well, why not? Let's just go in, we'll add a different loop. Okay, so we'll just add in until we have uh, eight different loops here. Uh, what else do we have? Okay, so now we've got eight different loops on the loop slots. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a Thor device. And I'm holding down my shift key so that nothing is routed using Thor. Next, what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to trigger using gate 16 or using pad 16 gate out is going to go down into the gate in trigger and then we're going to take the CV and first we're going to show the programmer on the combinator and we're going to take CV1 output and we're going to send that into the CV1 on the combinator we're going to change this to unipolar we're going to turn the trim knob up to 127 Okay, so now what's happening is the gate from pad 1 is going to trigger the step sequencer in Thor, and then the CV1 is going to be sent back out to the programmer CVN. And the reason I use the, the extra CVs on the back here are because all of the knobs and rotaries 
are being used up on my Octocong here. All the buttons and, and rotaries are being used. So this is a way to get around doing that and to use one of the pads as basically a button that kind of uh, will play your loop slot and will travel through your loop slot and change the loop slot for the different Octorex devices. So in your Thor we're going to turn everything off because uh, you won't need any of that. We're going to change this to step sequencer only. You can reduce everything down to zero if you want. Um, but basically all we need Thor for is for the step sequencer. And to get this started, what you're going to do is you're going to change the run mode to step. You're going to keep this on forward. You are going to change, move down to curve one. And you are also going to only use eight steps. Okay. So that's the basic nuts of it, uh, nuts and bolts of it. In your source, you're going to change this to uh, step sequencer curve one. The amount is 100 and the destination is going to go into the CV output 1. You're also going to duplicate this exact same thing yet again. Um, one thing I learned fairly recently is that um, anything you program in Thor is cumulative. So this actually doubles the CV output to CV1. CV output 1. Now it's just a matter of going into your combinator and on the Octorex, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to select CV input 1. You're going to go to pattern loop slot and you're going to change this to 0. So it goes minimum 0, maximum 7. And the reason that we do this is so that when we change our CV values of the curve for step 1, you're going to be able to see the loop slot actually change. And you'll notice that at 64, it goes to 8 and if you move down to 0 it's going to go to 1. It means that it's only using half the range of CV values to give you the full range of loop slots. So the first step, first curve is going to be set to 1, second curve is going to be set to 2, third curve to 3 or third step, um, fourth step is going to be set to 4 and so on until you have all these steps sorted through. Okay, perfect. So now what's going to happen is each time that you play this drum 16, this pad 16, it's going to go through your loop. Okay, it's going to play a different loop. And it's going to go from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 all the way through. And just to show you how that is, if you hit 16, so it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's because this pad, if we remember, is actually triggering the step sequencer to move, and you're telling the step sequencer to only move one step by using the step mode and forward by using the forward mode. So it'll trigger, it'll just move through and cycle through all of your loops using the step sequencer. Hope that makes sense. Um, so once you realize you can do that, you can do some cool things like easily switch this to random so that each time you play your pad, it's going to randomize which loop gets played. And we can pull up our keyboard again and have some fun playing this is from C1. Um, actually, before we do that, I'm going to have to run it. Okay, so now when I play C1, which it should, oh, wait, that was correctly mapped. Aha, we don't want this to chain. That, it could be a problem. Okay. Let's see if we can get this to run. Okay, there we go. So let's pull up the. Uh, let me see. Of 
go to C1. Okay, so now when you play using the A key, every time you hit that drum, it's going to go through a different loop. And I'm just going to go back in. I'm going to change this back to forward so that we can go forward through our loops. I think if you change this to 116 now, yep, it'll change on the 16th note, which is probably what you want to have so that you have an instantaneous change. Hope that helps you out, and uh, using that, you can uh, do all kinds of crazy things like um, put together this complete looper. Um, you can actually create um, what is it, 14 times 8, so 112 uh, loops or rex files that are contained in one single Kong, and you can play, you can loop through them using one of your pads or one of your keys. Um, once again, I'm Rob. Come visit me at reason101.net. I will make this patch available to everybody. Um, you're going to have to go to my site to get it. And um, yeah, thanks for watching.